Wellness, the state of being or doing well in life. Happy, healthy, or prosperous condition. Moral or physical welfare, a person or community. Would you guys um, define wellness or uh, well-being? Having the health to live the life you want to live. Okay. A sense of contentment. It's a wide open question. <laughs> um. Wellness is a state of being where you are, you're physically and mentally in balance with the universe and you feel pretty good. Being able to live in a stable environment, um, you know, economically with money, um, to be able to provide for your family, of course, and to maintain a routine and schedule and rituals, um, things like that. I want to experience the people around me in ways that I normally wouldn't by making sure that um, I'm looking out for my fellow neighbor. Um, it's also about eating right, exercising. Uh, if I don't do those things in a day, I usually go a little stir crazy. Being able to kind of get out and enjoy life and do what you kind of what you want to do. Like she said, a stable environment. That's big. Um, also, your bad habits. Um, get rid of them. Part of being um, having good health is you know taking care of yourself both hygienically, you know, and um, also, you know, stay away from the bad things that are going to harm your body. Um, having, you know, um, not having to go day to day, like having to wonder about, okay, where am I going to eat? Where am I going to stay? Well, wellness sometimes can be a little elusive because a lot of people want to define it in a lot of different ways, you know, and some people see wellness as what? That, uh, spiritual aspect, physical, uh, emotional, in a number of different ways. And you would be silly to pretend that all those other ways are not important because the, all those other areas have impact so that my, my emotions have an impact on my spirituality and how I take care of my body has an effect on then my body as well. Well, here we are at the wellness capital of uh, the Midway. I'm usually conscious of what I am eating, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy an occasional greasy, lovely pizza or some french fries, although that's, you know, not in my diet for the most part. Um, I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables. I eat less meat than I ever did in my life. I am an omnivore. That means I will try anything edible one time. And I I do have meat and dairy in my diet. And I have fruit and vegetables and grains and whatever else there is to eat. Fungi. Love mushrooms. So basically, I will eat anything within reason in reasonable ways and reasonable amounts. I've been a vegetarian all my life. I was raised that way with my two brothers. Mom and dad were vegetarians since college. Um, I stick to that diet today. So we try to uh, incorporate many, as many organic things as possible, um, often things that are locally grown. Uh, we have yet to put our own garden in. We've grown a couple of things, but it's hard to keep up. Um, it actually takes a lot of time to keep a garden going. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking out there and I'm seeing things coming up and Good. I'm excited about it. and. Our garden opening for uh, for the Midway Green Spirit Garden is uh, this coming Saturday. Oh, good. And I'll be there. I'll be there with several different hats on. We raise chickens at home. <laughs> Tie into other groups. Um, <laughs> we try, uh, try to support um, local farmers and get vegetables through a CSA. Yes, very much the same. We do a lot of farmer's market trips. Well, you are what you eat. Okay? Pretty simple. You are what you eat. If you eat crap, you're going to feel like crap. It doesn't happen all at once. It happens over a period of time. Little things you can do are going to add up, and if you make it part of your routine, it's not going to be a big deal. My wife, my wife is also vegetarian, so it's very easy to do that. 
we're vegetarians, I think that helps a bit with the routine part. Yeah. It's one thing to do thing, something once, it's another thing to make it part of your daily life or your weekly existence or you know you have uh, something you do once a month. If I don't get up in the morning and make my bed and I don't get to a solitary place to read my Bible and spend time in prayer or journaling, if it doesn't happen by seven in the morning, it's not going to happen at all through the whole day. Um, if you don't make it part of your routine, it's easy to forget and to just go into something else. And then you can wake up five years later and realize I have not gone on a run in a very long time. I mostly commute by bike or by feet, as in running to work. I purposely work roughly two miles away from where I live, therefore I can practice these things daily. So it's not incredibly far, but you know, I'll go back for lunch, take the dog out, something like that. My husband used to routinely ride his bike home from work three days a week, but it's kind of gone by the wayside <laughs> this winter. Yeah. And I try to get out and walk. I'm not, I'm not a fanatic exerciser or anything, but walking and biking are my ways of getting around. The whole idea of wellness is, is risky. Uh, biking, that, that can be a great source of wellness. And, you know, but that's assuming that just that physical part is going to give you wellness. But, you know, the reality, it's a comprehensive thing, isn't it? You know, you can be riding that bike all day and get hit by a Mack truck, you know, that's not going to lead to wellness, you know. You know, or, or you can be biking and next thing you know, you, you have a blown out knee because of the biking, you know. You get so excited about biking, now you're, you're pushing it further than you should. You can have a one leg and still be well. You can be blind and still be well. You can be deaf and still be well. As long as you acknowledge your place and also have a little humility on occasion. <laughs> Lindsay's been talking or telling me, you know, how busy you always seem. She said, like, she gets emails from you at like one in the morning you and you're constantly so running and you're constantly doing everything. Oh my gosh. And I would think that that would be exhausting and that you would be fatigued, but yet, I, I mean, on a wellness aspect that's physically hard, what, what's the compensation? I, mean, I, I have a friend in, in the neighborhood, way? he's a barber. Okay. He's just discovered uh, two months ago that he has stage three cancer. Oh my goodness. And he knows that, on one hand, he knows he can't barber five to six days a week anymore. So he's dropped back to about four days a week. But he's also gotten the kind of impression everybody else is telling him around him, you're sick, you're ill, you should be doing less. But nobody has bothered to tell him or ask him what feeds him. Uh, specifically for me, I know I just feel better and um, I'm more, uh, I'm just, I'm more uh, aware of, uh, of, of kind of just being healthy and I, I've always been somewhat minded around this and knowing that I need a certain amount of exercise or I need to uh, get my heart rate up so that um, I can feel calm. Um, for my daughter, she can't go to sleep unless we say prayer at night. Religion is a big part of it because it, religion kind of defines, you know, who you are growing up and the things you learn and, um, you know, it's kind of like your whole morals of growing up. I'm, I'm spiritual in a sense. I do not have a practice. I don't have any practice of religion. My a spiritual... <clears throat> I come together spiritual, spiritually with people. I respect their religious beliefs um, as long as they make sense to me. And I'm pretty liberal about that, you know. But there are certain things that, uh, certain places I, I don't go, you know. And one of them is to church very often.
although occasionally I have, I'm in a church for one reason or another, and uh, that's good. It, it, it's good to be with people that are all together for a for a. a a healing and a peaceful purpose, put it that way. Uh, I haven't been to church for quite some time, um, and no plans to return. I don't set out on a commute or a ride or you know a run um, trying to get uh, closer to that sort of feeling. Okay. But maybe it is. Maybe it's similar to what other people feel, and I just don't. Know, I just don't know it. I'm just having fun. I'm just. Uh, I'm just getting a good sweat and um, uh, just feeling better um, about moving, being mobile, and not self-powered mobility. Um, I have nothing against like returning to a church or to, uh, returning to a faith. I have just something I haven't approached yet in my adult life. Really, I didn't, wasn't really raised in any sort of faith or anything like that. I, I was raised Catholic. Yeah. Okay. So um, we. Growing up, we, we went to a lot of churches, and we had um, to. <laughs> we had to, yeah. Yeah. So we it was part no of our Sunday, you know, have the dinner. We try to make it to church. If we don't make it to church, we listen to the Christian radio station. Okay. Because it uplifts our spirits, and that's part of wellness. Is you want to have your spirits in high hope. People are responsible for my well-being. I'm responsible for other people's well-being. Right. And I think as we start to recognize that that well-being can never happen in isolation. It's got to happen within community. That's a good point. And also have a very strong com uh, neighborhood community. We're na we live across the street from each other. Okay. Send our kids to school together and have enjoyed coming out for picnic tonight. Okay. I try to experience my neighborhood surroundings, community surroundings as much as possible that is not in a traditional vehicle. Um, uh, that contributes to my health and happiness. And I think in order for me to have health, I need to be in some type of community, some type of body. There are all these areas that exist. And you know, you can have a car and lose one of its cylinders. And it can run for a while, but that engine's gonna heave and shake and right. move around. You might even be able to lose two cylinders and that car is gonna make it down the road. Right. But it's gonna run so rough and it's gonna scare everybody inside that car. Right. And once you pull over to the stop and you turn it off, that thing is gonna have worked so hard and been so, heated up so hot that those cylinders that were barely moving and seizing up when you shut it off and that engine cavity cools, they're gonna cool somehow warped and all those cylinders gonna be locked up. Right. Engine is dead. Yep, it's not gonna start. And you have people that sometimes ignore parts of their life. I can't exclude anything that I am for any amount of time. A look at it as a whole. Okay. And then a ho the whole is larger than than the sum of its parts. I don't. I don't think you have to to define it that closely. Okay. You know, I really don't think you have to define it that closely. I think you you have to be who you are. You know, and understand that you're a social being and also a creature of the earth and of the universe, and try to. I don't know if I'd say peace, but at least a balance with all of that. And that's, that's what I think of wellness as, okay. as, as, you know, wellness is, you know.